What's going on, everybody? I hope you're having a great weekend so far. Uh, I know mine's been pretty well. It's almost over, and I got to go back to work tomorrow. But you know, that's life for uh, a lot of people. So I guess I can't complain. I feel blessed. I got a job to go to that helps me provide for my family. So. You know, I just need to stop complaining about that. Uh, that being said, I'm just going to jump into today's video. Um, I have started my next challenge. Um, if you are unaware, I finished my one month uh, stint in Nix OS. Um, overall, I was, um, I will say, underwhelmed with Nix. Um, I was expecting it to be um, a little more than it was. Um, it, it's a cool distro. It's got some good features to it and everything. But for me personally, I just don't think it is a viable option. Um, could I live in it? Sure. Could I use it? Sure. But for the most part, it just was a little too much. Um, now that might change. I might go back and have another look at it at some point here and check out stuff like Home Manager and uh, Flakes and stuff like that, but we'll just have to see. So I have moved on from that and for the next 30 days, um, so from today until uh, what August 9th, I believe that would be, um, I am going to be living in... Debian. Uh, this is Debian 12 Bookworm. You can see right up here, maybe. Um, and if you saw my post in the community post um, a couple days ago, you'll know I was trying to figure out which window manager I wanted to run. And uh, so I put out a post for voting on DWM, i3, and Awesome. And I was hoping you guys would not uh, vote for Awesome, but uh, much to my chagrin, you sure did. So um, I kind of thought at one point, I thought I'm just going to say screw the whole uh, poll thing and I'm just going to do what I want to do anyway and we're just going to run BSPWM because Lua is the most god awful language I think I have ever attempted to use but um, I figured no um, this is what you guys wanted I gave you guys options if I didn't want to have the headache of dealing with awesome I shouldn't have put it in there and so you guys chose awesome so that's what we're going to do so I do have Debian installed I have awesome up and going I've done a little bit of configuration just to get my system to be um, usable how I want it. So let's just kind of go over what I've done so far. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And you can see this is my awesome workspace. Um, I've changed out the wallpaper. I've done a little bit of uh, customization on the bar a little bit. Um, this is by no means as far as I'm going to go with the customization um, on awesome. But we'll break into that in a minute. Um, first, I want to talk about the Debian install process. Uh, first off, if you've never installed Debian, um, it's almost a uh, skill or a you have to <laughs> have a degree on just getting to the correct ISO. If we go ahead and launch a browser here um, and we go to Debian and hit enter here and we're going to go to the universal operating system known as Debian. Um, you can click on the download link and that'll bring you here but you've got uh, this net install.iso that you could use. Um, that's not what I used. Basically what I did was I went um, and came in here and you go to the Oh geez, now you're gonna see that I don't still don't even remember how I got to it. So we're gonna go with more, I believe, um, and download right there. Where to get Debian? And then if you come over here, you've got all these different options. You can download an installation image, which is one step you can do. But also, what you want to do is you want to come down here really and go try live Debian before um, installing. Then once you're in this section, you come over here and you can do a download it via BitTorrent or via USB. Um, I came over here and you want to click on this link here, uh, AMD64. Then it takes you to this list and you can go down here and look through all the different. So this whole process is just literally to get an ISO. Um, I cannot stress how convoluted Debian makes it to get to this ISO selection. If I have a one piece of advice, if I only if I was only going to give one piece of advice to Debian, it would be make your website more usable. <laughs> so uh, this is really difficult to find. I know other people have talked about this as well, but it is it is super difficult to get to all this information unless you have followed a tutorial basically on how to get to it. So that would be my one big piece of advice. So I came in here and I scrolled down and I just got the standard ISO and I downloaded the standard ISO with no environment or anything like that. Um, they do have the installation guide as well. If we go back over here a ways, um, and we can go back down to download here, you can click right here on the installation guide. Um, and this gives you a whole installation guide. Um, you can click AMD64 and this is gonna walk through installation. I basically just used the um, uh, graphical installer that comes on the ISO 
um, and it literally walks you right through everything. Um, it's super easy, um, not quite as easy as the Calamaris, but really, I mean, close. Um, it's almost identical to it, just not as fancy looking. Um, you go through and you make a couple selections as far as your time zone and your uh, what disc you're gonna use and mirrors and all that kind of stuff. Um, then you partition your disc and you install. Um, it pulls everything down, sets up your network for you, all that stuff, um, or looks for networks and everything like that. Um, so it's really a super simple uh, install process uh, to get Debian up and going. I was pleasantly surprised. Um, I have installed Debian before on uh, virtual machines, but never have I done it on um, hardware. So this was a new experience for me. You know, I've run Linux Mint in the past. That was my first Linux distro that I actually ran long, I won't say long term because it was only a few months, but that I actually ran full, that I was running full time. Like, okay, I no longer have Windows, I'm running Linux. Well, Linux Mint was my first distro. So that's the closest thing to Debian I've used. Um, so once I got Debian installed, um, I booted right in. That wasn't an issue at all. Um, it logged in with my user and everything. I added my user to the sudo group um, and I went on with my business. Uh, the one issue I did did run into with um, the install right out of the box was the fact that I didn't have a Wi-Fi connection. Um, I had WPA supplicant all set up, installed and everything and running. But every time I went to launch it, it or run it, it would tell me uh, RF kill soft blocked. Um, so I tried to run the RF kill unblock command and it uh, told me RF kill command not found, <laughs> which was odd. I was like, what the heck's going on here? So I fumbled around a bit and I finally was able to realize that my uh, airplane mode was on on my laptop. Uh, and that was blocking my uh, Wi-Fi. So I clicked that button off and I had Wi-Fi connection. Um, I thought that's just kind of weird because that's not a button I ever touch. Um, so I thought, that's just strange. I wonder if Debian does that out of the box. So I thought, well, let's give it a shot. And I wiped my drive again and I did a reinstall again. And again, it came up with the Wi-Fi issue where I had to manually turn off airplane mode right after install. So I thought, well, two times is a coincidence. Let's go for three and make this uh, verified. And so I wiped the drive again. I installed again. Um, and sure enough, uh, as soon as I booted in and tried to set up my Wi-Fi, I had to turn off airplane mode. So I don't know if that's just a fluke thing on my end, on my system or hardware or whatever, but if you do install Debian 12 Bookworm, um, and you're having an issue with Wi-Fi with your WPA supplicant, talking about it being a soft blocked, try hitting your uh, airline mode or your airplane mode key. Um, see if that changes anything uh, because that was a big deal for me. It took me probably 45 minutes of goofing around to realize that that key was on because on my laptop, I don't have a light or anything on that key that tells me it is on or off. Um, so uh, yeah, so that was my biggest headache that I had. Um, then installing X, um, the X and all the graphical stuff, getting all the programs I need, Light DM, um, awesome window manager, Alacrity, um, just installed some of the basics and Vim. Uh, usually I use Vim, not NeoVim, but I thought, you know, this is a whole new uh, challenge. We're trying out some new stuff. I've never used Debian. I've never used, well, I shouldn't say never used awesome. I've had awesome, but I haven't really done a whole lot with it. Um, and I have used NVim before, but I've always just stuck with Vim. So I thought, you know what, let's just go ahead and use Debian brand new. Let's use Awesome. We're going to fight through this and let's go ahead and give NVim a try. So I've got NVim installed and somewhat configured. I'm still working on that. But um, basically, that's it. The only other issue I ran into was screen tearing, um, trying to get Compton installed or PyCom, excuse me, installed. Um, I was able to get PyJulius version of PyCom installed. So that way um, I could have a little bit of uh, fade in, fade out with the windows and stuff like that not massive animations but um, some transparency and stuff like that so I installed PyCom and I still had some screen tearing issues uh, so then I went back and did a little research and found that if you uh, install Debian it is going to install out of the box a program um, called X server X org uh, video Intel or something like that, I believe. Uh, that's an old deprecated program. You need to remove that program and uh, that should take care of any screen tearing, tearing issues you have. At least it did for me. So I removed that. I didn't have to install or make a 20 intelcomp file in my etc slash x11 slash xorg.conf.d. I didn't have to have any of that like I used to. Just removed that x server xorg video intel uh, program and uh, <clears throat> installed com or PyCom and everything works good, no screen tearing. So those were my biggest struggles installing Debian. Um, you can see right now I changed my wallpaper, I have X wallpaper installed. I don't have the typical awesome <clears throat> 
window manager uh, wallpaper that comes up with it. Um, the big thing I have with Awesome is um, everybody talks about how user friendly it is. And if you're not touching anything right out of the box and you can just memorize your key binding and stuff, yeah, Awesome is awesome. It comes with everything you need from if I hit mod P, I have a launching menu right, right across the top that comes up. So that's cool. I don't have to, I have that right out of the box. If I right click, you have a menu here that pops up. Um, that you can use uh, so that's nice and easy you have good key bindings you have your layouts up here so if you want to change layouts you can just click on this icon over here and that'll change your layouts you have your tag list up here I mean it's just literally got everything right out of the box that you could want where I struggle with awesome is I don't like things set up for me I don't like to install and go <clears throat> and I know that sounds stupid because most people with their computers do want to just set up, install and go but I personally like to put my touches on everything. I like to, if I have the option between installing a program and writing a bash script or writing something myself, I usually tend to gravitate towards doing it myself, which is a big thing with Awesome, is I want to be able to configure it. I see a lot of cool configurations for Awesome, but my biggest beef with Awesome is the Lua programming language. The configuration files for Awesome are so convoluted that I, I just can't Lua, I can't wrap my head around it. And so this is gonna be my biggest struggle, I think, is, uh, is fighting this Lua language. I am going to actually, if we actually launch a terminal here, let's clear the screen and zoom in, and let's CD into awesome. And if I do an LS, you can see I've got an auto run.sh, which is pretty much empty because I can't, I didn't, that wasn't working correctly for me, so I auto started my stuff another way. I've got lane, which is one of the libraries that um, Lua uses. And I have my rc.lua, which is the configuration file for Awesome Window Manager. So let's vim into rc.lua and hit enter. And you can see we're on line one. If I do a capital G, so if I do shift G in normal mode in vim, that should take me to the end of the file. And let's see how many lines this configuration file is. 598 lines in this configuration file. That is just outlandish. That is a massive configuration file. That's almost as big as my uh, Xmonad configuration file was. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to start looking into modularizing this. I'm going to break up my RC Lua with, from my theme, um, from all this other stuff from Webox and widgets, and I'm going to start trying to call things. But as for right now, I've just basically made a few changes to this configuration file to have my system look somewhat like I actually had a say in what it was doing. So um, I was able to do two things that are very important to me. One, obviously get transparency, which is uh, something I like to have um, most of the time. Sometimes I don't like it, but I always start out with transparency. And basically I did that by installing PyCom. And then you can see down at the bottom here, I just call PyCom right here and I configure that in another file. Um, I have XFCE4 Power Manager for a battery icon for the moment because out of the box, Awesome doesn't have a battery widget. Uh, for Webox that I know of. I'll have to look into that. Um, and I have my wallpaper set here. Um, so the other thing I did was I turned off, um, usually if you open a window, you'd have basically like tabs here, which is another user-friendly thing uh, for beginners is you get tabs for whatever windows you, are, you have open. And so you can click on tabs, kind of like on Windows. Um, but I turned those off. Um, title bars on top of the windows. I can't stand title bars on the windows. So right here, this awful dot title bar setup, I just commented that whole thing out because I don't want title bars on my windows. So I changed that. I added a couple key bindings and then obviously the most important thing, if I scroll, I don't know where it's at, let's do this. Let's find scratch, okay. So basically I made a window rule to create a scratch pad. Last time I attempted to do scratch pads in Awesome, the native functionality or the way that it was done was just horrendous. It didn't work if I had the scratch pad open and I had another alacrity terminal on a regular window open. If I closed the scratch pad or closed the other one, it would close both of them. Um, I couldn't control it very well, so it was just a headache. So basically I am using my window manager agnostic script and I have, we go over to workspace two and I hit mod return. You can see I have a scratch pad set up. Let's go back to workload one and we are going to find the version right here. Um, <clears throat> so basically right here, this, these two lines right here, well really it's this one line, this description here is for the menu you get if you hit mod S. You can see you get all the key bindings here. Uh, this second line description equals open a terminal group equals launcher. Um, that basically, this description right here is just add that description to the uh, hotkey list that you can, the hotkey help sheet that pops up. But basically I did awful key, mod key, 
return function awful dot spawn home jake dot local script scratch and then run scratch pad. So this is my script right here that runs window manager agnostic scratch pads. And then I just give it the option of scratch pad, which names that um, instance scratch pad. So then my rule for a window with the name of scratch pad will allow it to toggle and I can size it and I can put it wherever I want. So using my script and the window rules, um, this time around my uh, scratch pads have become a little easier to make and maintain, which is going to be nice. But this whole this whole mess right here for a mod key or for a hotkey setup is just un ungodly. I, I don't understand why this is considered user friendly. I guess if you know Lua or have some type of <laughs> um, experience with Lua, great. Um, and maybe it's not as hard as I'm making it out. Maybe once I get into it, I'll realize, okay, well, this is uh, not, not quite as bad as I thought. But in all reality, um, it's a nightmare at the moment. So we'll see once I start breaking this up and modularizing things, um, if this becomes easier or harder. Or at the end of this, if I like Lua and Awesome Window Manager more than... Uh, more than I do now. Well, if I like them at all, because as of right now, I'm not a huge fan. Um, but uh, it is uh, coming along. This is kind of where I've started. This is what I've got going on so far. And um, I'm going to try and get more than uh, I only did like two or maybe three videos on Nick's on that whole challenge. I'm going to try and get more videos out on this Debian challenge. Um, and uh, hopefully that. Uh, that gives you guys a little better idea of what I've been doing on it and what I think. Uh, Nix was just so hard because I literally spent that whole month long period just trying to figure some stuff out. Um, I never actually got a chance to really just be comfortable in Nix uh, with Hyperland because I was always constantly trying to fix something because uh, I was just trying to learn two new things at once, Wayland and Nix OS. Um, Debian uh, is real basic compared to uh, Nix OS. Um, if I can set up void and arch, I should have no problem setting up Debian, so I shouldn't take have to take long to do that. And awesome window manager, I'm hoping, doesn't take long either, and we can get into doing some customization videos and um, just kind of quality of life videos on Debian with awesome. So that's kind of what I've got uh, planned for the future. This is what I've got so far. You can see um, I've got, like I said, my scratch pads. I've got a little bit of window animation as things are forming. Um, I've got my bar adjusted a little bit, not a whole lot, but a little bit. Um, and I've changed around some key bindings and some wallpapers and stuff like that. So this is where we're at right now. Um, keep, uh, keep watching for future updates on what I think about Debian and um, Awesome Window Manager. And who knows, maybe at the end of this, I'll say, hey, Awesome is awesome. Uh, but right now I'm gonna say Awesome is meh. So uh, that being said, this is uh, basically what I got for you today. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, a great rest of your evening. Uh, just enjoy the rest of this evening before we head back to work tomorrow. And you know what, stay safe the rest of this week, um, going to your jobs, whatever it is you're doing throughout the week. Stay safe, keep a positive attitude, be happy. Just remember somebody out there loves you. There's somebody that loves you all. So uh, I'm one of them, love you all. You guys have a great rest of your week. God bless.